St. Catherine's as we celebrate her 15th Sunday of ordinary time. A celebrant for this morning's mass is Dr. Kent Fleck. And as one family in Christ gathered at the table of the Lord, let's now take a few moments to greet and welcome those around. Let's stay and sing together our opening song, Make Us True Service. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, when we do good for others, when we help others, we bring the light of Christ to shine in the darkness of the world around us. And that's a challenge for us, and that's why we begin each Mass with a penitential prayer, acknowledging that sin is ever prevalent, but that the light of Christ guides us through that and gives us the strength and hope to guide others as well through our words and actions, let us begin by asking forgiveness for the times that we have sinned, that we may do the work of our Father and show others our God is love. Lord Jesus, you spoke in parables to show us the fullness of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you call us to love God with all our heart, being strength and mind. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the source of strength for our journey of discipleship. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. On earth, peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take on us, you take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, have mercy on us. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace on earth, peace to people of goodwill. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are 
Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the, for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject what is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that it does honor. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, If only you would heed the voice of the Lord, your God, and keep his commandments and statutes that are written in this book of the law. When you return to the Lord, your God, with all your heart and all your soul. For this command that I enjoin on you today is not too mysterious and remote for you. It is not up in the sky that you should say. Who will go up in the sky to get it for us and tell us of it, that we may carry it out? Nor is it across the sea that you should say, Who will cross the sea to get it from us and tell us of it, that we may carry it out? No, it is something very near to you already in your mouths and in your hearts. You have only to carry it out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross, through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit everlasting life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him and left him and went off, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan traveler came upon him, was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds, and bandaged them. Then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, the one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. I could use those last four words as the shortest homily you ever heard, go and do likewise. You'd be very happy, right? But I'm not going to do that. Because you deserve more than that. We heard the scriptures this morning, and you know, from the 
you know, first reading from Deuteronomy, we heard about the Ten Commandments. Who was the greatest sinner in the Bible? Does anybody know any answers? Anybody want to shout out any answer? Who do you think was the greatest sinner in the Bible? It was Moses. Moses. Yes, Moses broke all Ten Commandments at one time. Okay, so it's a bad joke. The question comes up, who is my neighbor? What are the values we live our lives by? And it's not just a matter of knowing the Ten Commandments, holding them up in the face of others, and pointing an accusatory finger at others and saying, you broke this commandment, or you should do this, you should do that. This is one of the reasons and why I gave the preface remark before our penitential prayer, and why we have the penitential prayer. It's not the sacrament, but it's a prayer asking God's forgiveness, calling to mind that we are sinners. We're in, needs of, we're in need of God's mercy and compassion and love. And when we feel love, then we can go out and give love. Psychologists tell us that the two greatest hungers of the human heart are the need to love and to be loved. And what I like to pass along to children, both at my parish, St. George, where I retired from as pastor a couple of years ago, and passed along to all of our children, Nora, our server this morning, going into sixth grade, yes, junior high. And to all of the children who are with us, and your children and grandchildren who are at home, the three keys of success. And what are the three keys of success? Because Jesus tells us how to love our neighbor and gives us an example, faith, family, and focus. Can we all say that? Faith, because Put God first. In all things, put God first. If you, someone approaches me and says, Father, I need, I need some help. I've got an important decision to make, and I need your help. And I want your advice. I say, well, if you need my advice, or if you need an answer right now, I can tell you the answer is no, without even knowing what your question is. No, why would you do that? Because if it's important enough for you to want my input, that it's important enough for me to bring it to God, to think about it, pray about it, and not just give you a hip shot answer, a quick answer to an important question. And all of my important decisions I bring to God first. And I teach our children that I've had all throughout my vocation as a priest for 46 years to put God first in all things, and that's what we need to do. Husbands and wives, if you have an argument or something, do you bring it to God or do you just duke it out? And I'm going to win this argument. That doesn't work. But why don't we take time to pray about it? Why don't we put it aside for today? Think about it, pray about it, and discuss it tomorrow. Respectfully. And when we put God first in all things then we avoid making some serious mistakes. We avoid sin because the light of Christ guides us to our Father who loves us as we are. God doesn't ask us to be perfect. God wants us to be the best version of ourselves that we can be. And that's why we have the sacrament of reconciliation. When's the last time you went? When's the last time you told God through a priest, I'm sorry, and received God's forgiveness, the absolution that's available to all of us, and it doesn't cost anything. You know, if we have a pain or a serious injury, we go to the doctor and we take care of it. You may remember the last time, the last two years I was with you, I couldn't even genuflect because I had serious arthritis, bone-on-bone -bone arthritis in my right hip. Eight weeks ago, I had total hip replacement. Here I am jumping around like a kid again. No pain because I went to the source. I talked to God. And God said, well, I've given you everything you want. I've, you've got doctors, you've got insurance. Do it. And so I had the surgery because I trusted and brought it to God. Family, trust in your family. In my recovery, I turned to my family. My brother, who lives out in the western suburbs in, near where the surgery was performed, you know, put me up for a week because it was near the surgeon in case of an emergency, in case of an infection, in case things didn't go right, I had that support. And he said, sure, come on over, stay as long as you need to. And then my sister came from Wisconsin and took care of me. She didn't have to, but she was concerned about me. Once again, the love of God. 
the greatest hungers of the human heart, the need to love and to be loved. And I felt loved by my family who cared for me and helped me through those, that first week of rehabilitation. So family is very important and for Nora and for all of the children who are with us, I've got an important message for you. So boys and girls who are with us, listen up. I'm going to tell you something your parents don't want you to know. Parents, please forgive me for saying this. But when your parents ask you a question, they already know the answer. They're, they're asking you the question to see if you're going to tell them the truth. So always, boys and girls, always tell your parents the truth. We all have faults and failings. We all at times do things that we shouldn't do. And for us as adults who care for our children, we have to be careful. We do not punish our children. We discipline them. There's a difference. Punishment brings about a negative attitude, a negative feeling, anger, frustration. I'll never get over it. I might as well just be a bad person all over again because, okay, it's a month I can't have this. And there's no relief. Make it a whole year. Make it 10 years. It brings about a negative attitude. Discipline what my parents did to me, teaches us what we did was wrong, here's how you can make up for it. For every day of good behavior and doing something extra, sweeping the basement, you know, cleaning out the garage, washing dad's car, we got a day off. And so instead of a whole week without TV, it was, could shrink down to three days. Whew, or no dessert, even worse. You had to sit at the table while your siblings had dessert and said, mmm, these chocolate chip cookies are so good. I think I'm going to have another one because Ken can't have one. That was, that was misery. But it taught me discipline. It taught me what I did was wrong and I can make up for it. For us as adults, husbands and wives, the same thing applies. Treat each other with respect. If you have an argument, don't go to bed angry with each other. Put a bookmark in it. It'll be there in the morning. And you can deal with it respectfully. And once again, bring it to God. Pray over it. Think over what you want to say and what the direction you want to go before just blurting out things that are going to be negative and create. For our children, once again, uh, to finish that example, they can't get back at us as adults because we're authority figures. So what do they do? They become bullies. And they bully other children and act aggressively towards them. That's what happens. Our scriptures teach us that what we need to do is not just know the law, but follow the law and help others to do good. In the seminary, I was taught over 35, about 3,600 canons, that's a liturgical word for laws, of the church that I had to study, canon law. I had a great professor because he taught me the last canon in the last class that he taught us is an unwritten canon. And it goes like this, do no harm. I love it. He taught me not only to know the law, but don't apply the law and beat people over the head with it and beat them into submission, beat them into being good because once again, I'm punishing people with the law of God rather than disciplining and pastorally guiding people in reconciliation and outside of reconciliation to love the Lord and to realize God loves us as we are with our faults and failings in our sinfulness, with our weaknesses, and gives us the encouragement and gift of his Holy Spirit to be the best version of ourselves that we can be. That's all God asks of us. And when we have that attitude, when we feel God's mercy and love within our hearts, we want to share it with others. And that's what our faith is all about. And focus. Faith, family, focus. The third key to success. Staying focused. Nora, in school, stay focused on the subject. Do your homework. Put the cell phone down. Parents, godparents, grandparents, when we're at the dinner table, put it on silence. Those of us who are older remember the days when there was just one phone in the house. It was usually in the front hallway and that it had a cable attached to it. You couldn't take it wherever you wanted to go. The TV was without an antenna, and now the TV has a cable and the phones are you know, without an antenna. And put the phone down, put it away, and be present to one another. That's why we come to church, to be present to God's word and sacrament, to welcome Jesus. 
And at the dinner table, when you go out, put the phone away. Put it on silence. The message will be there if it's important. And most of it's not important. And yet we're looking at it constantly and learn to be present to one another. And when we do that, we learn to put the love of God in action. We stay focused on the important things in life that people and family and friends are more important than the things that we have. As we grow older, for those of us who are senior citizens, what we realize is we don't need any more things in life. Create memories. Use the money and the resources that you have with family and friends to create memories and once again to help others and to reach out. Finally, in today's bulletin, what you're going to find is Father Dennis put a letter from Cardinal Supich and what he had to say regarding the July 4th mass shooting in Highland Park and also the mass that he celebrated afterwards, his homily. Take time to read that. It reminds us, if you've seen the terror, I mean the news stories and the terror which we've reflected on this whole week, that there were good and compassionate people like the Good Samaritan who reached out, the two-year-old child that was lifted from his parents who sheltered that child from being shot and the parents died, and yet a Good Samaritan saw that as it was happening and rather than just running past for their own, to save their own life, even while the bullets were flying, took the child and kept the child safe from any further harm. And there's many other stories that you've heard or will hear. And with many other shootings and violence in society and the tragedies that happen, sometimes tragedies of nature, the goodness that's in people's hearts and that's in our, in our hearts and how we can make a difference. And that's all that God asks of us. And that's the lesson from our scriptures. Deuteronomy, the law of God. And yet, putting that law into action, what we heard in Luke's gospel today, to love and to be loved, to be the sign of God's love in our world today. Jesus no longer walks the earth. He'll, he'll come back one day, we believe that, but we don't know when. But until that time, through the waters of baptism, you and I became children of God. What a privilege. And that God asks us to do what Jesus did, to bring others to our Father, to help others experience the love of our Father that we've experienced. To love as we've been loved. To forgive as we've been forgiven. The basic foundation of the Lord's Prayer that we say every Mass, and for us who are in church today, probably say every day before we go to bed. And put our souls at rest in the hands of God, knowing that tomorrow's another day, we'll have more opportunities to improve on what we failed at and to be the best version of ourselves that we can be. And that God is counting on us and gives us the authority that Jesus had, that Holy Spirit, given to us in baptism, strengthened in confirmation, so that his love may be real through our words and our actions in the name of Jesus. Amen. That wasn't a very strong affirmation in terms of putting God, the, the work of God into our hands, and yet we all realize it's an awesome task that we can do each day. We stand now to share in our profession of faith, and we call to mind this prayer was handed down to us after 300 years of persecution, and yet they remain faithful. And they pass this on to us, and four times in this prayer we say, I believe. And it helps us to understand the foundation of what gives us strength, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and the church that we honor and that we are called to bring others back to the love of God. So keep that in mind as together we proudly proclaim, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, 
and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Like the Good Samaritan, may we be moved with compassion for those in need as we bring our needs and their needs before the Lord our God. For the Church, the Body of Christ, that we may be Christ's body in the world, reaching out to help those in need, lifting up those who have fallen, and caring for those who are suffering, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders at every level, that they may exercise compassion toward their constituents and may their compassion be reflected in the laws they enact and the policies they implement. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For judges, prosecutors, police officers, and all those who apply and enforce the law, that they may do so with justice and fairness. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For victims of crime and abuse, that they, like the victim in today's gospel, may receive care and comfort, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all military, police, firefighters, and first responders, may they be kept safe from all harm as they serve and protect us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to uphold the dignity of every human life from conception to natural death, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all whom we remember today at Mass, especially Bob Gorman, Laverty and Fitzpatrick families, Shirley Mae Weedoff, Alicia Makatangai, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick, especially Marie Sanchez, Joe Strainas, Yvette Gutierrez, Bob Bonner, Marilyn Hogan, Bill Toth, Kitty Turkowski, and all those listed in our parish bulletin, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our dearly departed loved ones, especially Patsy Swink and Jerry Warhow, that they may rest in the peace of Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, your Son showed us an example of selfless love in the parable of the Good Samaritan and provided an example himself in laying down his life for the rest of humanity. May we be examples as well of selfless love for our neighbor. Grant this and all the prayers we make through your Son, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Longing for love, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the Church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that, when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness to all whom they meet. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mary. By the passion of his cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, it is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <clears throat> we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, and, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, and his associate bishops, with the clergy, religious, and entire people your Son has gained for you. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her beloved spouse, St. Joseph, with the apostles and martyrs, St. Catherine, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We stand in the presence of the Lord, and with our family of faith, we pray in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace among us. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Nora. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Amen. body of Christ.
For those members of our family of faith who are at home and unable to join us, and we wish that them good health and that soon they will be able to join us, we offer an act of spiritual communion, a prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. One thing I would ask is, before we have our announcements by our beloved pastor, Father Zymek, is that we just please be seated for a moment. And what we heard in our scriptures this morning, the Good Samaritan, take a moment and close your eyes just for 30 seconds. Think of someone whom you can help. Whom you, to whom you can bring the love of Christ today. Perhaps someone who's sick at home or in hospitals and to give them a phone call or to pay them a visit. Perhaps your children to do something special with them and let them know how much you love them. So close your eyes for a moment. Let us ask the Lord to inspire us to be his hands, his voice, his heart to those whom we love. And registration continues for Vacation Bible Camp, which begins this July 18th. Ms. Teresa Ward is in need of adult counselors to help. Registration for religious education is now open. Contact Ms. Teresa Ward. Please remember to return your Father's Day remembrance envelopes. 
the 8.30 morning mass on the third Sunday of each month will be offered up for those intentions, both living and deceased. Please print names clearly and enclose the suitable donations. You will notice that our Mother's Day intentions have been inserted into the bulletin this weekend. Father Fred tested positive for COVID this past week, fully vaccinated, his symptoms are mild. Following COVID protocol, he has gone into quarantine. Please remember Father Fred in your prayers. And because Father Fred is not able to help us out this weekend, we have Father Ken helping us out. You're and stuck I'm with me. <laughs> Thank you. And he mentioned about reaching out to someone that maybe you can help. Uh, well, Father Fred, I mean, Father Ken just recently helped me. Uh, my, he gave me some tomato plants to plant outside the rectory. And then I had some varmints come by and started to eat my tomato plants. So Ken says, well, you gotta build a fence around it, Zai, so that I helped him build the fence. Uh, but it was his idea, so I, my p tomato plants now are protected. And uh, finally, I took some pictures of the carnival, which are now displayed in a slideshow in the vestibule of church. And if Father Zymex tomatoes are missing, you can always say, well, Father, I thought you grew them so as to feed the hungry. I'm hungry. Thank you for the tomatoes. <laughs> no, they're his tomatoes and Father Fred's. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O oh Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow, and we may share your love with others through our words and actions in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Our Mass is ended. Go and share the love of God. Let's sing together our closing song, This is the Light of Night. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Yeah.